compact disc player. It sells for the low price of just $1,499.95, but with your trade-in, AMB Sound will give you a minimum trade-in allowance of $164.89. Hmm, I wonder how much I can get for an old muse, brother. You, you wouldn't trade me in, but what about the memories? Hey, All those good times. that kind of trade-in? Sorry, little buddy. AMB Sound, Vancouver and Victoria. Good morning. Let's ignore for the moment the economic hyperbole which Premier Bennett gave us last night, but welcome the step and go almost directly to the guts of his proposition to public sector and government units, unions which could conceivably defuse it. Here's what he said. I ask the representatives of government employees to return to the bargaining table immediately. I assure them that with the legislature in adjournment, Bill 2 will remain at its second reading stage. The BCGEU has stated it wishes to negotiate the items in Bill 2, and the government will consider its course of action on this legislation when the House reconvenes, pending the outcome of these negotiations. I think most British Columbians would agree our draft regulations to govern layoffs are both generous and equitable and provide a range of options not generally available in the private sector. Nevertheless, the opportunity does exist for the BCGEU, as it does for other public sector unions, to negotiate as a first priority when they return to the bargaining table their own contract language to govern layoffs and gain exemption from Bill 3. The layoff schedule for October 31st could in this event proceed by the collective agreement. The minister responsible will be briefed daily on the negotiations and is to report by October 31st on the progress achieved. I would expect that cabinet would receive a recommendation at that time as to whether an adjustment in the layoff schedule would be in order in view of the progress achieved. We will retain the flexibility to consider on a day-to-day -day basis whether any agreement is in sight. And while we will not accept delay for delay's sake, we shall allow every opportunity for collective bargaining to work in the public sector. It seems to be an opening in the door, but let's get last night's reaction first from Cliff Anstein of the BCGEU. There is still October 31st deadline. If those firings are not rescinded, those 1,600 people are not the people who are going to be fired. Uh, there may be 1,600 people laid off, but they have to follow the collective agreement to do that. I think we should be very clear on that. We're willing to go back, but the issue of those people is still outstanding. And we must have the reaction now, too, from the leader of Solidarity, Mr. Kuby of the BC Federation of Labour. I made a mistake there. Anstein is also in the studio this morning. Now we'll see what QB said last night. The Premier extended uh, an invitation for a dialogue. A Solidarity Coalition will be in touch with the Premier's office first thing tomorrow. Uh, there is uh, a minimum of 10 days, or at least 10 days time, to deal with the question to start a process of reconciliation. And speaking for solidarity and the IWA in the studio this morning is Jack Monroe of the IWA. But we must have the views and the interpretations too of one of the most important bodies involved, which is the Employers Council of British Columbia. And for that purpose, we have Jim Matkin of the Employers Council. But first after the break, to Cliff Anstein of the BCGEU. If one thing is clear, it is that confrontation is self-defeating and will only make things worse in our province. 
British Columbians cannot picket their way to prosperity. To Cliff Anstein, director of bargaining for the BCGEU, a very straightforward question, Cliff. Are you prepared to go back to the bargaining table now and negotiate an ability to pay exemption clause in your new contract while Bill 2, the club, is on the back burner with the House adjourned? Well, we're prepared to go back to the bargaining table, Jack. Uh, I don't know about negotiating ability to pay exemptions because I mean, that's, that's all smoke and mirrors. Bill 3 is not law. That's still part of the solidarity program, that Bill 3 doesn't become law. But I point out, I've got a package here of layoff material that we had prepared and we're ready to put on the bargaining table on October the 3rd before the government broke off negotiations. So yes, we're prepared to go back, but because these are so, the negotiations are so sensitive because they require some sort of flexibility and innovation, and because the stakes are so high, we think it should be done with the assistance of a third party. We've already asked the Chairman of the Labor Relations Board, Steve Kelleher, to free up some time next week, since we're already going to be there on a couple of LRB complaints dealing with bargaining. So we're hoping to meet the government as soon as Monday, Sunday if they want to, but as soon as Monday, certainly, at the LRB to go back to bargaining. Be generous, Mr. Anstein. Cliff, the Premier has taken a significant step backwards, has he not? I don't think, I don't want to get into the characterizing backwards and forwards. He's picked up a proposal that we made to Jim Chabot in October the 4th. He's come back with part of it. We think the response is positive, and uh, we're prepared to also respond and see where we go from here. But you're not going to be stupid and say we're not going to talk to Gavin Davison unless there's a third party there, are you? No, I think there has to be a third party, and hopefully somebody else that can be briefing the minister and uh, so the messages are straight and that we're both getting information. Now, but he does have some very encouraging information, does he not? How do you interpret the fact that the 10 days you presently have before action mm -hmm. could be extended if you're making progress? Is that not a step in the right direction? I think so. Um, hopefully we, we will make progress. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully it's not going to be all one way. That we, If we walk in there and the government says it's either our way or no way, then October 31st, November 1st uh, is still, that's the timetable. So but he said to you here, that if you negotiate a contract language to govern layoffs, you can e get exemption from Bill 3, and Bill 2, the tough one, which ends your contract, will disappear. Yeah, but we've already got contract language governing layoffs. We've already got proposals that were ready to go on the bargaining table. We're ready to negotiate, but it means that GERB and the government also have to negotiate so that the settlement we reach is acceptable to both sides. And he says, too, by October 31st, if he gets a progress report from his cabinet minister, mm -hmm. there could be an adjustment in the layoff schedule. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that not the key to your action on November the 1st? That's, that's at 1600. That's right. I mean, that, that's, that's the key, that uh, if uh, he decides to not proceed with those firings, to rescind those uh, dates that people already have for November the 1st, and we're at the bargaining table making process, we'll stay there. But just a minute now. You say quite firmly, if he decides to rescind those firings, that's right. You honestly don't expect to achieve that. Well, he has to because the letters that people say have got to say your employment is finished on October 31st. If there's no change made to that letter, then uh, those people are still fired. No. So there has to be a positive act on the part of the government towards the people that are being fired. Well, can I interpret it my way, and you tell me if I'm okay. wrong? He says an adjustment in the layoff schedule. In other words, if you make progress on bargaining a contract, uh, it might be said, okay, no layoffs until the contract the proceedings which are going well are complete. Is that correct? That, he, that could be it. That could be it. Uh, but you are also in agreement, and you've said as many as 10,000 people could be laid off by this government under the peasant contract agreement. Yeah, I'm not advocating that. But no. By, by saying that, it always begs the question, why are they using the legislation if they've already got layoffs? But you would admit to the public that there is room for layoffs now, with the government's lack of money, it says, for your, some of your members. There is room for layoff, but there's always been room for layoff. They've laid people off. People are being laid off this month. Right. 
So, I mean, it doesn't mean we agree with the specific cuts. I mean, the social service cuts, the human rights cuts, that's, that still has to be resolved. Now, you're speaking but, as BCGEU at but the moment. Strictly as BCGEU, once the political decisions are resolved, then there's a collective bargaining process. And what we're saying is that the government should act like any private sector employer and follow its collective agreement. Do you agree that what Bennett is saying to you just now is, now is the time in a new atmosphere with the, all the mouths in the legislature closed, which is yeah. quite funny by itself, now is the time for you to sit down and negotiate a new agreement on, at least on layoffs, yes. in the next 10 days. Yeah, and that's what we've got. We've got 10 days to do it. And you're prepared to try it? We're prepared to try it, and uh, we'll be making contact with people later today, and hopefully our bargaining committees will be together in a couple of days. But you throw one spanner in the woodwork and you say, we're not going to sit with Davidson alone. We want a third party. Well, if we want it to be successful, we're going to need a third party or other people at the bargaining table. I mean, we went through this last year for five months, and we didn't get a settlement until there was both a third party and other people appointed by the Premier at that time. One final question. This is technical detail, but many people out there understand this now. The bill that you are really scared witless of, of course, is Bill 2. Well, Bill 2 destroys the entire collective bargaining process. Right. And therefore, for this... Us. For you, yeah. it does. It ends your contract by Act of Parliament on October 31st. That's right. Correct? Now, so therefore, you have now the opportunity to negotiate a new agreement while Bennett generously says, I'll put it in the back burner and I won't use the club unless I have to. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, you can characterize it as generous. It, uh, but but it's, a, it's, it's part of the process of negotiations. Bill 3 is still there. That affects every public sector worker. But that still has to be dealt with by solidarity and by us because we're part of it. But Bill 2 is a crucial one for you. Individually, for our union, yes, Bill 2 is very important. Cliff Anstein, are you not really quite hope are you hopeful this morning with Bennett's province-wide television move last night that an agreement can be made? I would like to see an agreement made. I think, I think that uh, any rational person would want to avoid the type of confrontation that's going to hit this province next month if agreement isn't made on our collective agreement and also on the other issues stuff, of human rights, residential, the tenants, and uh, Bill 3. But it does put in a little bit into the distance the possibility of any arbitrary action by the labor movement or by your union of an instant strike on November the 1st, does it not? If, if progress is made over the next 10 days. And uh, we're going to be there trying to get a settlement. Cliff Anstein and the BCGEU are prepared to start negotiations on Sunday if Sunday. necessary. Next, we're going to get the interpretation from Jim Matkin of the, Lo of the Employers' Council and Jack Monroe of the IWA and Solidarity after the break. In order to provide a cooling off period, the government has decided to adjourn the legislature to an unspecified date. We have chosen this course of action in the interest of cooperation, conciliation, and consultation. Let's ignore the economic hyperbole for the moment. Mike, that was a good, good statement. Well, the suppose he's on the without getting into our work. One, two, three. Okay. How's that? How's that? Yeah. It's four Webster cups this morning. I can bring them some for home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank yeah. Oh, no, it's daytime. If I'm out, I'll get yeah. it in there. Jim Matkin from the Employers Council of British Columbia must have a firm response to the Bennett television speech. We were very encouraged to discuss it amongst uh, the industry uh, executives, and we found the response uh, thoughtful. The Premier did not back off of restraint. He's continuing with his intent to downsize to protect us from an increase in taxes, to establish a climate of investment in this province that will encourage uh, growth and jobs for people. All right, very encouraged. where did he back off? What doors has he opened, first of all for the BCGEU and then for your, oh, you're just a stubborn opponent in solidarity? 
Well, he's uh, allowed a cooling off period for the bargaining. That's what he's permitted, but he has not backed off of his intent with regard to restraint and his intent with regard to downsizing the government. Now, Bill 3, how would you expect an exemption to be negotiated under Bill 3 with Bill 2, the big club, lying on the back burner? Well, the fact that the, the parties have been asked to go back to the bargaining table is, a, is, a, is an opportunity for them to find a solution that, uh, to this problem, which indeed is the essence of Bill 3. That's the th important uh, factor. Bill 3 itself permits bargaining. Uh, it is uh, therefore up to the parties to find a layoff solution at the bargaining table. Uh, before I turn to Monroe, though, are you not very much concerned, however, by the lack of any sensible seniority proposal in the draft regulations? No, I'm not. I think that the uh, draft regulations uh, pick up some uh, language found in the private sector, uh, ability uh, and uh, where ability and, and seniority are, are, are equal, then uh, uh, that's something that we've uh, been able to work with in, in industry. I, I'm, I'm not uh, concerned. Are you that. not concerned, however, that Bennett did not make any overt moves to <coughs> defuse the ideological package, the mediation, the human rights, the rental mediation, the human rights? No, uh, because I don't think uh, it is uh, an ideological uh, problem. I think those uh, bills uh, uh, are uh, part of the deregulation aspect of the uh, restraint and that the uh, Premier, uh, by adjourning the House, has given more opportunity for consultation on, on those bills. But I don't uh, see it as an ideological package. Jack Monroe, you're up to your neck in problems with the IWA and the forest industry. You're also up to your neck in solidarity. Right. The Monroe response to the Bennett opening the door to the BCGEU, adjourning the legislature, and also putting Bill 27, Human Rights, Bill 5, the Rentlesman thing, on hold. That's got to be an encouraging step. Well, Jack, I, uh, I agree that it's an encouraging step. Uh, I'm, uh, I was uh, somewhat pleased with some of the things he said, certainly for different reasons than my friend Matkin here. Uh, but uh, I think that it uh, did show a bit of responsibility. I don't think anybody expected the Premier to get up and say, OK, I give up uh, type of a thing. I think he did it. Uh, uh, somewhat diplomatically and I think the door is open and we certainly are going to seize on the opportunity to uh, to make the best of it. That's what we've been saying all along. We've, we've said before that uh, the legislature should be adjourned to take some of the the tension out of the province and, and, th and that happened. I think as far as uh, uh, the, the um, solidarity is concerned uh, we are going to continue to meet. Uh, uh, we are interested extremely in what he meant by what he didn't say. Such as? Human rights, Such education, as. Reynoldsman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What, what does, does he mean by saying that those are on hold? I think uh, Art is uh, asking for a meeting uh, right away to sit down with the Premier so that we understand exactly what he said. Well, if he didn't say on his carefully scripted television broadcast last night, he ain't going to say it today, is he? Well, I don't know. I think uh, that was obviously a pretty well rehearsed program and uh, the words were chosen very carefully and reading between the lines it appears like like there is going to be some relief. Uh, Operation Solidarity is uh, growing in numbers, growing in strength, growing in determination that uh, this government is not going to destroy the social fabric. Now, if he has said, all right, he understands that and he's going to back off, that's good news. Now, therefore, the prospect of this horrendous general strike or a rolling confrontation for October 31st is removed, is it? Depends on what happens, I guess, in the next ten, ten days, Jack. Uh, the, as I say, the, uh, the labor movement have, uh, had asked for an adjournment of the legislature. Uh, certainly, Barrett should be put back into the legislature. If, uh, if we can work things out in a sensible, sane manner, then, then the confrontation probably goes further away. Because, I mean, uh, obviously, the Employers' Council and many people are in accord with Bennett's ideas to put public sector and uh, pu pu civil service unions at the same economic risk as your people are when they're laid off at a moment's notice under the terms of your agreement. Well, Jack, I don't think that, uh, that anybody has said that they are not opposed to or do not understand that there has to be some restraint. The, the thing has got blown out of all es escalation. The, 
The BCGEU have said for a long time the, the government has the ability to lay people off. If uh, Certainly if the economics aren't there, uh, it was the firing, not layoffs, the complete total disregard for seniority, service, competency, or anything else, the firing is what was bothering a lot of people. It was badly done, wasn't it? First of all, the, the attempt to fire them under legislation that isn't even passed. Well, the key thing was the intent of the legislation was to remove tenure, and I, I think that was misunderstood when the bills first came down. The amendments uh, uh, clarified that, and the further amendments later have made it clear that uh, the government isn't interested in firing, it's interested in layoff, in order to achieve the necessary restraint and hasn't backed off. Of Problem that. with words. That's not true. It isn't tenure that was bothering people. It was the total disregard for seniority, competency, service, or anything else. It was firing. 1,600 people got letters and said October the 31st, you are fired. That was the problem. Well, I would, I would say that uh, what those letters meant is you were laid off and that that has been proven by the subsequent amendments. Uh, the, the, uh, the regulations make it clear. They talk about recall. How can you have recall if you're being fired? Oh, it's a very optional recall. You either take your money and run, your two weeks pay for a maximum of whatever it is, a year, or, and then you lose all rights to recall, or you stay on recall without any money for up to a year. Is that not correct? That's correct, but the fact that there's recall uh, denies the notion of, uh, of firing, just as you uh, have well, recall in the uh, in When it all started, there wasn't recall. Now, they have been softening up. I think, once again, the, this whole world is always talking about negative things. I think there are some positive things. One, the, the, the tension is taken out because the legislature is not going to be going through in these, these nonsensical 20 motions of closure. and and this sort of stuff. And screaming and shouting and behaving like yahoos all round. Right, I agree. The Socrates were a disgrace. So were the NDP. Oh, no. The, uh, the, the, the period of time now should be really used by, I think, some uh, uh, significant people in this province to, um, to have some effective consultation. Okay, more with Monroe and Matkin after the break. I would say that Jack Monroe is surprisingly moderate this morning, and you're saying now is the time for consultation and negotiation between all of you. And you would agree. I would agree with that. I think consultation has always been the aim of industry on this sort of problem, and it has succeeded in the past, so let's hope it'll succeed this time. But you had Einstein this morning yourself. They don't want to go naked and the alone in front of the GERB. Is he right or is he wrong? Well, I haven't been involved in... Uh in those negotiations, uh, Jack, uh, I think that uh, that people are pretty worked up, excited about what the hell we were we were headed for a disaster. There is no question about that. Uh, I think that uh, there is an opportunity, and maybe I'm a little bit more optimistic than than some other people. But I think that, that there is at least the opportunity where we should give it our best shot to resolve some of these problems. Uh, I would hope the forest industry, now that the they followed the premier in his hard nonsensical line. The forest industry jumped on that bandwagon. I would hope now that the forest industry would agree with the premier that maybe we should have some effective consultation and stop this nonsense that's going on in collective bargaining and lockouts, et cetera, et cetera, and, and negotiate an agreement. Because that's one of the tactical keys to the situation in British Columbia. If you had a contract within the next 10 days, that would also defuse it, wouldn't it? No question about that, but I think that the main point is that the uh, Premier has indicated the tough economic situation that we're in and that restraint, as you've admitted, Jack, is necessary and I think that applies to the to the settlement as well. We have to have a restrained settlement in order to compete internationally and keep jobs for people. In well, the of course, as far as the public sector unions are concerned, there is no possibility of an increase anyway. It's only working conditions for down the road that we're now bargaining. Is that not so? Well, I think uh, the uh, possibility uh, is there if there's productivity improvements, uh, but I, I clearly uh, productivity is the issue. And uh, we have uh, had a number of settlements where there's been no increase in the first year, j just as they have admitted in the forest industry. And Bill 11 is there right now, could be used. There'll be, there will be no increases, minus five plus five. 
you know, on the productivity basis for all of the public sector unions. That's right. And that had to come, didn't it? That, that was necessary. That and was you essential. would agree with that too, wouldn't you? I, I, as I say, Jack, I'm not involved in BCEU negotiations. I, I'm saying that everybody has understood that, uh, that some restraint is necessary. I think that, that the collective agreements in this province for the last couple of years have proven that the trade union movement understands. What the hell, we're not a bunch of dupes. We understand. The problem and the confrontations are coming when employers are, are demanding to either gut the agreement or destroy it. And it, it's short-sighted and it's stupid. Well, I think one of the settlements, and I'd like your views on this, one of the keys to the settlement, even if there's no wage increase, is a sane seniority clause. Right. Is that not the issue on which you might support the BCGEU stronger than anything else? Sane seniority, right. Right. It, it, it makes sense. If you work 25 years, you should have some preference over somebody that works three years. You would agree, too. Well, certainly uh, the issue of uh, an equitable way of dealing with the layoffs is uh, one that we would support. But uh, the key thing is there has to be some layoffs. Well, I, I want some, just a little bit of detail. has to be some layoffs, not necessarily by October 31st, though. Well, the Premier has indicated there is uh, a, an opportunity for extending that deadline All right, how if do there's progress in the negotiations. In other words, with the club in the background, how yeah. do you interpret the key section of his thing last night? Does it mean a, a new collective agreement in progress under Bill 3 to satisfy the Premier? I think it means that the parties have to address the problem of tenure in the public service and they must be making some progress to remove We should call that. it job security. Job security, uh, yeah. something that uh, we don't have in the forest industry. That has to be uh, addressed. If that is being addressed, then there's uh, flexibility on the uh, deadline. And would you it. agree that a third party must be present at the new negotiations to keep the cool on the battles which you've seen between GERB and the BCGEU? Well, it's important to understand that in the public sector collective bargaining, the law provides that the chairman of the Labor Relations Board performs the function of the Minister of Labor, and he is the one who can uh, appoint a mediator to that dispute. So if the parties, and I understand the GEU, are requesting uh, the chairman to make such an appointment, that is provided by the law. And uh, certainly uh, we uh, would find that the success of mediation in the forest industry, uh, as, a, as an example, perhaps uh, if the union are requesting mediation in the dispute with the government, that might help as well. Is the chairman of the Labour Board authorized to do that by himself, or must it be a political decision? No, he's authorized by himself. The law provides he performs that function, like the Minister of Labour. Interesting point. We'll take some reactions to Premier Bennett's speech last night. Are you mad, happy, or reasonably sane about it after the break? Well, I'm pleasantly surprised by the reaction of Monroe. I, I didn't expect any other reaction from Madkin. If he's not kidding us, will it work? Jack, uh, maybe I'm being overly optimistic. I, I really believe that, that if he is not trying to BS us or dupe us, it should work. If he is, we're in a mess. Go ahead, please. Uh, I don't think we should allow uh, Mr. Matkin to get away with the statement that the uh, notices that were sent to the 1,600 employees did not mean exactly what they said. Now, he's supposedly a former lawyer and a former deputy minister, Monroe is absolutely right. The letters meant exactly what they said. So as a lawyer, I think he should qualify what he means by the lotuses did not mean exactly what they said. I'll hang up and listen. Thank you. I didn't see the letters. What I saw was the legislation and the amendment. We had discussions, as you know, in the Employers' Council with the minister after the legislation first came down in Bill 3. and. Uh, the minister, after those discussions, amended the bill to make it clear that the words without cause were removed and that the intent of the legislation was to negotiate the layoffs just as the private sector has. Yeah, but uh, he's basically correct. They were laid off under legislation that wasn't even in the House, uh, was just in the House at the time. They were fired. They were fired, was Right. I would say laid off, but the fact remains no. they would go unless there's a modification by October no. 31st. Jack, they were fired. The law changed 
uh, and clarified and made it clear they were laid off. So Go the ahead. Law, the law changed and said they took without cause out and put in the ability to pay and, and all the rest of this nonsense. But the people are still fired, entitled to severance pay. Well, they've now got a severance pay package, have they not? Yes, they have. Of a kind, which is supposedly more generous than yours. Maybe. Is it? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know what theirs is. Two but weeks pay for a, up yeah. to 15 years and no right of recall. That's, that's what you get when you get fired, not what? laid off. What do you get in the way of recall? One week. Well, what do you mean? You're laid off. How long do you stay on the recall? 18 months if you got more than a year seniority. Go ahead, please. Yes, hello, Mr. Monroe. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to say that, of course, the first half of Bennett's speech was the uh, standard right-wing Fraser Institute stuff that's been packaged for him by Michael Walker. Right. And secondly, that the uh, 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 recess of the legislature shows clearly that solidarity is now the opposition to Bennett in this province and not the NDP. But having said that, I want to ask uh, you, as a leading member of solidarity, if solidarity has it in mind to, if they can get some of these collective bargaining principles back into operation in this province, will they be prepared to bargain away uh, the human rights branch and the Randallsman's agreement and so on, these other packages of bills that attack fundamental human rights in this province? Uh, or will they stick by that and ask that Bennett make concessions on those bills too? Because I know that a lot of people in solidarity... Okay, we've got your message. Are you prepared to... No. Jack, we are not going to divide... Uh one section of our society away from another section because it appears like there is a, an olive branch to one section. What I said before was that, that we want to find out exactly what he means by what he didn't say. And he didn't talk about human rights, Reynoldsman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Other than the fact that they're on hold, we want to know what that means. Go ahead, please. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. I'd like to know uh, why did Bennett ram all these bills through and now he wants to take a vacation and uh, stop what he was saying was costing us thousands of dollars in the meantime. And now he's going to deal with the unions instead of us, like instead of our, op our opposition in okay. Parliament. Okay. I don't think he's going to deal with the unions. Certainly uh, the, the bargaining process that's going on in this province uh, had the ability to, to turn us into a disaster, and I think that that's the first thing that uh, we have to work at, at trying to, to resolve. I think that he continued this nonsense of closure and all night sitting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because he was paying far too much attention to backbenchers in his cabinet who six months ago didn't know where the lavatory was, were now thinking they could run a bloody government, and I think that, 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 the, that they didn't understand the amount of opposition that was building. They now understand it, then he has, has opened the door. Let me put a question to you, Jim Madkin. I never know what these politicians, despite the length of time I've been around, whether it's always a Machiavellian plot to bring in the real tough legislation and back off, or whether it was a concerted opposition which made him scratch his head and say, I'm going to back off. Prospect of a general strike. Well, I think the uh, key thing is that the government had introduced the, the centerpiece of its restraint uh, program. They had, they had uh, passed Bill 11, which is the Compensation Stabilization Program, which was a key issue in the election for which they had a mandate. Correct. They had passed Bill 3, which they felt was necessary in order to make uh, the downsizing, the laying off of employees. So I don't see his move as a back off of his legislative intent. I think that what has happened is in our parliamentary system we have three readings of the bills because we expect some debate, some criticism, and some change. And uh, you're raising the question of some of the other bills perhaps uh, needing uh, further amendments. That's now available. People have the opportunity. In fact, Bennett said last night that he's made it clear there's going to be amendments to all of these bills, but of course as of this moment we don't know what the hell kind of amendments he's looking at human rights or the mediation service of the rentalsman, do we? No. Been a lack of communication, has it not, Mr. Madkin, since the moment the 27 packages came in well, to spell out to people what the hell's been going to happen. Perhaps the, some of the problem is with our structure. We don't have a parliamentary committee structure uh, like the federal government that permits uh, more review 
uh, by outside groups like the labor movement and uh, the employers council before the bills become uh, finally passed mm -hmm. go ahead please from prince george hello jack yes i'd like to comment uh, compliment you on surviving in such a radically left-wing environment down there in vancouver <laughs> what you mean monroe and madkin madkin uh, certainly not well, radically left-wing. i'd like left -wing. to address this uh, statement to mr monroe this is quoting from my prince george citizen here october the 17th Letters to the editor from the Gay Lesbian Society, Donna Lee Alcock, says she's on the steering committee of solidarity. If you're going to read that for me, you don't have to bother. <laughs> <laughs> How does he feel about working with people like that? Why don't he let us decent folk know uh, who his allies are? I'm your ally. <laughs> I'm not going to get you off the hook, <laughs> but that's your considered answer. Penticton, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Monroe. I think Mr. Bennett has you beat. Uh, uh, I'm one step ahead of you and ready. I think, uh, and that's the goes for the president of the beat GEU too. I think that Mr. Bennett has got you on the run because you've had him backed against the wall, and I think the only thing for you to do is to stay with your guns and don't give in because uh, I think that you're turning around and you're giving them too many hints of what uh, you should be doing, and I think you should be close lipped about what you should be saying. You hear that, Jack Monroe? Yes, and the Executive uh, Council of the Fed is meeting today. Go ahead, please. Yes, good morning, Mr. Webster. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank and congratulate you very much for having Mr. Monroe on our show. He's very straightforward. He's understood very easily by the working people. One other thing I'd like to say, I'm very disappointed in Jim Matlin. I sat with Mr. Matlin many times in the Council of Unions on British Columbia Railway. Mr. Matlin surprises me tremendously simply on the basis that he knows that unions and management can work together, and he knows they can work. And the thing is, to me, it seems that he's siding with the Bennett government, which is the worst thing that he could do, the worst thing that man can do. I'm a teamster. We negotiate collective agreements. IWA negotiates collective agreements. In the end, everything usually comes out okay. Mr. Matlin never comes out in public and tells the story of British Columbia Railway. He will not tell the people in this province how well that railway is working, that it's making money. They don't want you to know that. Okay, hold on a second. I don't know why he brings in BC Rail, but you've been a, a public servant for all of your time in British Columbia until very recently, correct? Yes, and, and I, I have a great deal of uh, respect and support for BC Rail. It's a very important part of our economy. Uh, I want to make it clear, the Employers Council is a nonpartisan organization. On the other hand, we are very supportive of the intent of the government's program, and that's what we feel the economy needs. And we're, it, it's a matter of, the, of survival in British Columbia that we continue to have a climate so that we can, uh, we can uh, compete internationally and have jobs for uh, employees. That's, that's the basic point. <laughs> right. More, one more segment with Monroe and Matkin after the break.
Well, in case you just got off a plane, what happened last night after months of severe tension in British Columbia's industrial relations is that Bennett went on a free time tele telecast around the province and said, uh, he'll back off a little bit. In other words, he will give the BCGEU extended time if progress is made to bargain under Bill 3 for a new layoff procedure and God knows what else. But Bill 2 is on the back burner, and to prevent the politicians causing trouble of any stripe, the House will be adjourned for some considerable time. And Monroe raised an interesting point for which I haven't got a correct legal answer yet, but I would suggest to you there's a possibility that if this is an adjournment of the House and it sits again shortly, that Barrett could go back in when it reconvenes as a matter of normal course without any more silly fuss about the whole business. Hey, have you thought about that one? Yes, I think he can go back in, Jeff. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Webster. Uh, I'm directing this at uh, your general public and uh, Mr. Bennett, because I know he's watching your uh, magnificent show. Oh. Um, I think Mr. Bennett is the best thing that ever happened to our province. Um, I think that the BCGU's uh, only card up their sleeve is uh, the strike... Uh, um, I don't want a political philosophy. You encourage the, you're obviously encouraged by what happened last night. Oh, well, certainly, yes. And uh, I think that if uh, the BCGEU uh, calls a strike, uh, he's, uh, Mr. Bennett is going to do exactly like Reagan did with the air traffic controllers. And uh, he'll uh, hire people that need work that are out on the street right now. Thank you very That's very, very kind and conciliatory of you this morning. He and I are trying to keep the cool in the public interest and somebody said, Bennett's, Bennett's going to do a Reagan, decertify the union and bring in scabs. Is that right? Well, Mr. Webster, you have to realize something. I'm 22 years old, and I have my own business. I'm glad for uh, you. And in this time of recession, uh, I'm doing fairly well. Good. And, um, you know, people that can't hold their own in uh, the private sector would be fired. And Agreed. It's the same thing that happens in, uh, that's happening now in government, and I agree with it. Good. Thank you for your call. Do you want to comment on that? Do you want to comment on that? I think we're all better off and live a little bit better because of uh, the success of the trade union movement, Jack. And uh, he's 22. Let him be around for a while, and I'm sure he'll discover that. Go ahead, please. Yes, I'd just like to say that the uh, drivel that um, Premier Bennett went and uh, come up with last night, at, uh, which was, to me, a sham and, and, a, and a fraud because it wasn't him speaking. It was the Fraser Institute that was speaking. The collective agreement uh, reached between um, both parties, interested parties, that want to see the workers and the companies um, the best that they can get in any negotiated agreement. And all the Premier has done in his, in his cabinet have managed to put a wedge between the um, good collective reasoning that goes on between the negotiating parties. Here's a man who says it's a sham and a fraud, Jimmy Matkin. You're obviously basically on the government side. That's where your interest lied. Is it not partially a little bit of a sham with Bill 2 there? No, I think that it's, what we must remember is that there's always been legislation there when bargaining takes place in the public sector. This is not new. That's part of the fabric of this province's laws. The same laws apply in Ontario, Manitoba, Alberta, and so on. So, uh, and I think the unions are, are accustomed to dealing with legislation while they're bargaining. Of course, we go right back to the, what the basic problem was in 72 was when Barrett gave the public service unions in B.C. the right to negotiate staff reductions. That's where it stuck in social credit's craw when good times disappeared. Is that not correct? I think that's the problem, is that the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, government uh, gave away, by legislation, what should have been uh, kept for its legislative prerogative. And if he'd corrected that in 75, it would have been accepted, but he hasn't done know. it. I don't know about that. I want to, the first, this caller, uh, the, the first part and the last part of that speech last night was unnecessary. It sounded like a lecture from Michael Walker or the Fraser Institute, and, and it was unnecessary, and I guess if we're going to get into the negative aspects, yeah. I've been trying to stay positive. Yeah. The negative aspects are, he talks about uh, increasing our, uh, our exports by 10%, etc., etc., etc. It was his government, his cabinet, that took 85 million bucks out of our reforestation program in this province to help balance his books. The forestry service has been cut deeper and harder than any other department in, in, uh, in the government. And, and how the hell are we going to increase our natural resource exports if there is shipload after shipload of 
unmanufactured number one peters going out of this province, and we are basically planting no trees. So uh, I, I don't mind getting on the negative part, but, but, surely, but, Jack. We, but I think the positive part was in the middle. The front part, we didn't need the lecture and we didn't need the, the back part. Well, but surely, Jack, we do need to recognize that it wasn't British Columbia's fault that we're into a world recession, that we're simply part of a serious worldwide problem. And uh, his uh, response to it in the first part was necessary. I think that's why you've admitted that restraint is necessary. What he was right. saying in the front part is that that's what we've got. Sure, but, but it shouldn't be restraint, restraint in, 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 in our, our basic renewable resource is, is forests. And we're doing a terrible job on reforestation. Plus the fact that there is shipload after shipload after shipload, something like 80 ships this year, going out of here with number one peeler logs. And that is nonsense. We should keep them here. And, and if we ain't smart enough to be able to use them, then sure as hell the trees should be here so that our kids can use them. Well, certainly we would like to see uh, higher uh, value added. But that's the market making that decision. And the market is responding to the worldwide situation, to the international if problems. If we that fill face up Japan with so many logs that the place almost sinks, they sure as hell aren't going to buy any wood for a long time. There are something like 20,000 sawmills in Japan. But why, why would they be buying our wood if they've got every bay full of our logs? But w perhaps we're not competitive when they manufacture of our wood. That's what we're bargaining or you're bargaining uh, at the table now. We've got to remain competitive so we can saw that wood and send it to Japan instead of we sending logs. We are competitive. Our productivity factor is up considerably in spite of the fact that in most places in this province we are working in 25 and 30 year old sawmills. You can't expect the workers to run any faster. It's the employers and the government that have got to climate, create the climate, spend some money, spend some money. Vancouver plywoods, for goodness sake, of all the millions and millions of dollars that Vancouver Plywoods has made for McMillan and Bodell where they run around and buy some worn out goddamn pulp mill in France that they get ripped off on and now Vancouver Plywoods is going down the tube. But your union negotiated a restrained settlement in the United States, a three year settlement and that's what is necessary in British Columbia so that we can manufacture the logs and, or, and, uh, and not be uh, yes, subject to Yes, and you can buy a house in Portland, Oregon, three bedrooms, two or three bathrooms, nice backyard and everything else for $65,000. You, you can't buy a shack in, in Vancouver for $65,000. All right, we can't negotiate the forest industry today, but due to regard part of it, uh, his whole overall economic behavior is a sham and a fraud. And even I, looking at what he boasted about last night, he was boasting about government intervention in the economic field like his dams and his northeast coal. However, that's not the point. Gentlemen, uh, the, I point, the point is that, that on the program, the, the, the path that they were on, they were destroying any sense of anybody to come to British Columbia with investment. Well, I disagree. I think they were on the path of encouraging people to come to British Columbia because they are bringing restraint. They're, they're making a commitment not to increase taxes. That's the essential environment for the yeah, province so to be We're prepared. getting off the point. You're, you're, you're having great trouble to make a contract agreement at all yeah. because of the fact that some of the unions allied with you have been acting tougher than the IWA. I'm having a problem getting an agreement because this industry of ours are in such a short time short thinking span that they don't understand what's going to happen in the long term. They have been on the hard line, like the climate that's in this province created by the government. Now the government appears to be softening it. I'm saying the, the employers in our industry should follow, follow, if there is an opening there, and back off of some of their hard line nonsense. You would agree with that as far as the forest industry is concerned? I w don't think the government has backed off. I think we have to remain steadfast with the restraint message. And I think that's what the Premier did last night. And I think that the forest industry uh, is going to uh, need that restraint as well. Fair enough, gentlemen. You, are you agreed on the fact that the possibility of a general strike and a shutdown of BC on November the 1st has disappeared, has moved backwards no. a little? No. I, I think it has. I, I think it, I'm on, encouraged. Depends what they mean, Jack, and we'll find out, I guess, in the next couple of days. If what he said is true, then certainly it's taken some, some pressure or some tension out of the province. And you would say what he says is true? It certainly uh, is true, and I think he has begun the process of settling some of these disputes, and we're very encouraged. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm going to change the pace of the program after the break.